welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are introducing our new stitched pond frame die and this is so cool because it has this cool little frame and these great little die cuts that are perfect for creating a pond scene and it fits perfectly with our stitched pond. So you can mix and match them which looks really cool especially for shakers which we're going to be making today. We're also going to be introducing our cattails border die, which is an awesome border die for helping set the scene, which is really, really cute with our swan soiree set. First up, we're going to take a look at the stitched pond frame. So you can see that you get a frame there, and there's a pond shape on the inside of that. There's also these cute little cattails, grasses, two sizes of lily pads, and the cute little lotus flower to go on top, and that adorable little frog. So you can take those little cattail pieces and layer those on top, and then you can layer the lotus frame on top of the solid piece to create this really cool look. I really like doing it in tone on tone. And of course you could use the pond on its own or the frame on its own. Here is the original stitched pond frame that came out back for fall winter. It was our ice skating pond for our mice, right? So now it's perfect because we've taken that pond and we've brought it right into springtime. So you can layer that frame right on top of that stitched pond and this is really cool for shakers. Or you can do that frame and you can inlay it into the opening that the outside in has created. Then you can use all those cool little die cuts to create the look of a pond in springtime instead of an ice skating rink in wintertime. Here is the cattails border die and I love this die so much because those grasses are just gorgeous and it's got this little die right here that die cuts the cattail toppers and it die cuts all five that you need all at once with just one pass of the die cut machine and then you can layer those right on top to have this really really cool dimension for your cattails. So we're going to be starting off using that die and the first thing we're going to do is cut this awesome grassy hillside die out of some cilantro cardstock. And then we're going to die cut the cattails border out of some cilantro cardstock as well. Now to add a little bit of dimension to these, we're going to be doing some inking with some Lucky Clover Distress Ink. And the cilantro cardstock mixed with Lucky Clover is one of the best combos. And the Distress Oxide ink kind of is kind of like a pigment ink, so it kind of sits on top of it. And it just looks pretty and magical. And I love it for creating these really cool pond scenes. I think they're just so gorgeous. So we're going to go over the top of the grassy hillside and the cattails border. For our sky, we're going to be using some mermaid cardstock, and that's cut to standard five and a half by four and a quarter. And so we're going to layer that onto a white card base. And then we're also going to be die cutting the stitched rectangle frame in white. And I'm going to use this as a guide to stamp my sentiment because I want to get my sentiment stamped first before I start layering anything onto this card. So we're going to take that sky and we're going to drop it in our misty. And then we're going to take that frame and drop that in two. Then we can pull our stamps from the Swan Soiree stamp set, which is Have a Beautiful Day. And we can line those up in perfect placement, taking into account that we're going to be using that stitched frame. But then right now I'm just going to pull that frame off and just get the stamping done into the sky and I just love that font so much I think it's so pretty so we're going to stamp that in some black licorice ink and then we're going to go ahead and start to form our scene so we're going to add that grassy piece that we inked earlier on with some tape runner I'm just kind of eyeballing that I don't have to worry about the bottom because that's going to be covered up by the cattails then I'm going to place those cattails in perfect placement and just create a little tick mark so that I know where to trim off any of that excess. I like to die cut my last piece there with a little bit of extra so that I can find the perfect place for it. And then we're going to layer that on with some foam squares. Now we need to add some detail to our cattails and this is my favorite way to die cut these is from this awesome wood grain cardstock because it gives it the best texture. So we're going to run that through the die cut machine and then we can layer those onto our cattails. And so I'm going to use some liquid glue from the glue tube. We'll just add it right on there and then we can drop those tiny little pieces on there and that little texture from the wood grain just adds that extra special something. Right now we're recreating a card by Elise and one of my favorite things that Elise did in the card was she stamped the cute little teeny tiny hearts from the set and a lot of our sets have these cute little tiny hearts or stars and they're perfect for adding into your sky. So I'm going to stamp those out in some guava ink all around the sky just kind of floating above the grass and then we can start to work on layering the frame on there and once you add the frame on there I feel like it makes it look just perfect. It just gives it that great finishing touch. 
We've stamped the pond from the Swan Soiree set in some kiddie pool ink, and we're gonna tuck that behind our cattails here and attach it on with some tape runner so that it's kind of in the background. And our swans are gonna go onto the pond with some foam tape to help them kind of stick out in the scene. And we're gonna add that cute little baby in there too. And then I started looking at the card and I thought it needed more hearts. So I'm just gonna add a couple little more hearts into the sky. And then now we're gonna do something kind of cool to fill in the bottom. So I'm taking another cattails border that I've die cut and once again, inking it with that Lucky Clover ink. And now we're actually gonna cut apart this die. So I really love using this die in this way too. You could just cut the cattails off. You can just cut those pretty little grasses off. It's perfect for filling in the scene, especially behind this frame. So you can see I can just tuck it right behind there and add this extra grass texture. And it looks like I almost have a whole nother border die, but it's actually just the same die that we've cut up and kind of mixed and matched. So you can see I was kind of playing around with my pacement, wasn't sure what was gonna look good. I decided to use some of the cattails there for some height on the left and right hand sides and just taping those down and then adding the cool little grasses from the center. And I think it looks amazing and it just fills in that scene and I love that it gets a different look out of the one border die. And now the card is all done. It's so super cute. It was really quick and easy to make. And I wanted to show you the comparison with Elise's beautiful card. And what she did to help fill in her scene is she added some stamped grasses and cattails from the Swan Soiree set. So I love the mix and match of either adding stamping or die cutting depending on what you're feeling that day. Next up, we're going to be creating a shaker card with the Stitch Pond frame and the Stitch Pond dies mixed together. And so the first thing we're gonna do is take a stitched rectangle die and we're gonna die cut some of this dandy day paper. And this is gonna become our grass in the background of our pond. Then we're also gonna take a standard size note card here at five and a half by four and a quarter. We'll add some tape runner and layer that largest stitched rectangle right there right on top. We're gonna use the original stitched pond die and we're gonna die cut some of that beautiful shimmer cardstock. And that's gonna be the base of our shaker. Then to create our shaker, we're gonna take the stitched pond frame, which is the brand new die, and we're gonna die cut a bunch of those out of white cardstock. And that's how we're gonna build up our shaker. Another option for creating shakers is to use that frame die and die cut some fun foam. You know that kid stuff from the craft store? That also gives a really similar effect. But in this case, I decided to just cut up some white cardstock and we're going to be layering those on top. But the first thing we need to do is stamp our sentiment. So I used that pawn there as a guide and stamped welcome little one onto the card base. That way I would get all of my stamping done before I added anything else to the card. Then we're gonna add some liquid glue to the back of the frame and we're gonna layer that onto our shimmery pond. And we're gonna keep repeating that. And as we stack these layers of cardstock, it's gonna start giving us height. And that height is what's gonna let all of our cool little sequins and shaker pieces move around in the card. So once again, you'll see here in fast motion, we're just adding liquid glue to each frame and then layering another one on top until the height seems about right for those sequins to be able to move around freely in the card. And so there you can see that awesome some height that we created with a bunch of die cut pieces. This is an anti-static powder tool that's usually meant for heat embossing, but I like using it in shakers because that powder is gonna to stick to any excess stickiness we might have from our liquid glue, and it's gonna take away that stick so that our shaker pieces can move freely. So adding in some of that anti-static powder tool into your shakers is a perfect trick. Here I went ahead and added a bunch of cute little sequins to the inside, and we're gonna be taking some eighth inch double-sided tape, which is some nice strong tape, and we're gonna put that all the way around the edge of the pond. Then we've die cut the original stitched pond die out of some acetate, and that's gonna become the window for our shaker. And so that nice strong tape is gonna be a perfect hold for this acetate. So we're gonna layer that right on top, and you can see our shaker mechanism is starting to form. So I'm just gonna use my finger and press down all the way around to make sure it's really attached, and you can see those little sequins move around. And then of course we need to add a little bit of decoration so that we don't see any of that tape runner. So we die cut that stitch pond frame out of a different shade of shimmer cardstock to go along with the shimmer in the base of the pond and those beautiful sequins. And we're gonna layer that on top and now everything looks nice and clean and so pretty. So now we can go ahead and take that entire shaker mechanism. We're gonna add some tape runner to the back and then we can layer that onto that card base that we stamped earlier. And you can already start to see those sequin pieces moving around. Now we're gonna take some images from the Swan Soiree set cause it's just perfect for this pond. And we're gonna layer those guys on there and I'm adding them on there with some foam squares cause I really want them to have dimension cause I want it to look like those sequin pieces are really moving behind them. Like the water is just flowing around. 
Then we went ahead and took the die cut pieces that are in the stitched pond frame die, and we're gonna go ahead and cut those out of some cilantro cardstock, noble fur, chocolate bar, and then we've got some really pretty shimmer cardstock there for the lotus flowers in a light pink and a dark pink. So we're gonna layer those pieces on top of each other, and then we can layer those onto our lily pads. You can see just how cute these are looking. And I went ahead and die cut more pieces than what I was going to need. But any extras that I have, I'm just gonna put them in a little baggie and keep them with my die so I can use them on the next card. So we're using liquid glue from the glue tube to attach the cattails there to the top, and so we're starting to form everything together. And then we can start to add these into the scene. So one thing I started doing is I would add some things kind of layered in front and behind, and then I'd move the shaker pieces around in the window again because it would give me kind of a new perspective depending on where all those shaker pieces were and would look a little bit too busy and I would take some things on, take some things off, kind of move them around. And then one of the things that I thought ended up looking really pretty was actually adding some of these die cut pieces behind the pond too. I feel like it kind of integrated the whole die cut pond into the car and setting of it just sitting on top. So you can see just by adding those cool little die cut pieces just sticking out from the outside just really added a lot. And then we're going to add one more cattail up there to the upper left hand corner just to kind of fill that area in. And now this card is done and how cute is this? I love the shaker element. I can't wait to make more of these. I also love that you could change up the sentiment, change up your stamp set. The totally awesome stamp set would be really really cute with this. And here I wanted to show you the card card by Shari that inspired me to make mine. So I used her design but created a shaker from it. So I think it's really cool how you can mix and match ideas from your friends that are just adorable. The other thing I wanted to show you is how our slide on over slider die set fits perfectly in the pond too. So how cute is this? You can have them floating around in a shaker pond, you can have them sliding around, or you can just do a plain card too. So many cool ideas. Next up, we have some gorgeous cards by the design team, and we're gonna start off with this card by Nicole. Oh my goodness, how beautiful is that inking and coloring that she added onto the pond. I just love it. And then here, Grace created the coolest magic iris that is actually inside her pond, and I love how the sentiment changes from don't worry, be happy, to you're totally awesome. It's just so cute. This card by Elise is so fun. I love how the pond is the card. That's so clever. And then here's that little slider card that I showed you by Jen, which is just so sweet. I love how the cattails fit perfectly with the Bayou backdrop, and everything that Audrey did here is just so gorgeous. And then this is the card by Elise that inspired us to make our card today. And then here, I love this card by Jen and how she has the swans just tucked right into those cattails. And then when you open the card up, you have the pop-up hello on the inside, which is so cute. I think it could be fun to add some cattails to either side of this as well. And then here, this is the card by Shari that inspired us to make the shaker card today. And then here, I love how Kara used the cattails cut with a heart. So pretty and so unique for a beautiful wedding card. So I can't wait to see what you guys do with these die sets, so make sure to share it with us. Thank you so much for watching today, and I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye!